Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Here in uh, San Jose, California, we're at the 14th International Solar World Conference and Expo. Our next speaker, very good friend, Max Yankelovich from Freedom OSS. I will not take up his time. He is going to tell us what it takes to have a well-rounded solar. I like uh, this, Max. Like I want to learn. Take it away, sir. Now, pay attention. Very good. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I will be speaking today about a well-rounded um, service-oriented architecture. You know, really the concepts that go uh, along with service-oriented architecture and really trying to uh, describe a practical way to address it. Well, let's talk about some of the questions that are being asked uh, when, you know, we're probably five to six years into solo implementations. A lot of enterprises have tried it. A lot of you guys have hands-on experience or heard about somebody who's doing SOA. Nothing new, but you know, here, here are the questions. I mean, web services, is, there is, uh, is, this, is this SOA, right? If I'm doing web services, am I doing SOA? ESB and BPM, we hear a lot of these buzzwords out there. What is the difference? I mean, enterprise service bus, business process management, is this all the same thing? Is this something different? Organizationally, how do we organize around service-oriented architecture? Uh, Questions I'm hearing all the time. Do we need to reorganize uh, to implement SOA? Security. How do we keep our SOA secure? Do we need to do it? Uh, Event-driven architecture. There's a buzzword that came up uh, maybe a year or a couple of years ago. EDA. I mean, what is, what is the difference? So should I be doing EDA, event-driven architecture? Should I be doing service-oriented architecture? Uh, what skill sets do I need to develop in my organizations to support service-oriented architecture? Am I just good with programmers who know Java? Do I need to bring in additional resources? You know, how do I, how do I handle it from a skill sets perspective? How many services should I have? You know, service-oriented architecture is all about uh, services. How many should I have? Should I have 200? Should I have 500? Should I have two? Um, the granularity. How do I version services? So some of you who have done really hands-on implementations of services via web services, some other uh, way, probably know that version two of this thing looks differently. So how do I actually version it practically? Uh, maintainability. It's yet another thing that you're putting in your data center. How do I make it maintainable from a development perspective, from operational perspective? Uh, ESB, is this a way to solve my uh, SOA problems? I mean, we hear a lot from software vendors, you know, you buy this package, and you get a solo in the box, is this really a way, you know, buying something like, like, like an enterprise service bus, is this really a way to solve my solo issues? So we have something, uh, we can, uh, Freedom came up with something that's called a solo flower. It really helps us guide whenever we're working with clients or whenever we're kind of presenting, it helps us guide service-oriented architecture approach. It really sh shows in a nutshell, in a very simple way, organizational and technology and design aspects of service-oriented architecture. Uh, I'm going to run through it quickly, uh, and then we'll kind of dig in into each one of these components and understand why it's important for an enterprise to have each address each one of these in, in, some, in some manner. So SOA, I mean, at the center of service-oriented architecture are services, and that's something that's core to it. But we have things like enterprise service bus, the infrastructure, governance, business process management, canonical models, we'll talk about that, that's a very important part of so. Data management and virtualization, portals, message-oriented middleware, and business rules engines. So all of these components are important on a technical level, important on a skill set level, and important on an organizational level, as well as when you're applying design patterns when you're designing your SOA. And that's really, in a nutshell, a well-rounded SOA implementation for your organization. Again. Not all of this stuff has to be in day one, but eventually as you're maturing, you should be addressing most of these things. Well, let's talk about, we'll start with the most important things. Regardless of what technology we're using, what are the services and events that we need to have at the design level? This is really when we're designing our SOA, we're making decisions. What are the service domains, first of all? You know, th you know they're usually aligned to major business units, so we have finance domain, right? Are we, ha are we creating services within our finance domain, accounting domain? Are we creating services within operations domain? Uh, sales and marketing, such as customer service, right? I mean, a, a service that describes our, our customer.